Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, I have a really cool tutorial for you about an advanced dodge and burn method that will blow your mind. Don't worry, I will make it super simple for you to understand. And please watch the full video because I'm going through different stages of dodge and burn, starting by the classic method of using a pixel layer with soft light to using a curve for dodge and burn to using the lab mode and why this is beneficial especially in combination with a curve. By the way, this video is brought to you by my amazing Patreon supporters. And if you want to become one of them too, I created these two amazing rewards you will get right away after signing up. One of them is a gear list of the gear that I'm using right now. 30 items from my cameras to the lenses, the lights, the tripods, the backpacks, the gimbals, all the kind of stuff that I'm using. And I have commented on every item, why I use it, what I think are the benefits, what are the downsides. The second list has over 80 items in there for inspiration and also really cool resources. So these include software tools, apps, websites where you can download stuff and where you can learn about things, YouTube channels, books and even music for editing. So this also is really awesome and will keep you inspired and entertained for at least a full year. Let's get started with this tutorial. So like I said, let's start with the classic method to show you the difference to the new method. But both methods are different and both are useful. So don't throw away one of them. OK, I will zoom in here a little bit and then classically and this is something I use on all of my pictures, create a pixel layer and set this layer to soft light. And then we are going to use a brush like so and open up our color over here, as you can see up here, you double click on that ring here. And then what you can see here on the left side is everything here is gray from black to white. And here we have H as L and L stands for, for luminosity. So when you go to 50 or around 50, this is neutral. It will not do anything to your picture. But if you go darker than that, this will make it darker. And if you go brighter than that, this will make it brighter. So this is a really, really useful dodge and burn method because everybody understands how to use a brush and what these different brightness values are. And of course, you can do dodge and burn on the same layer. And dodge and burn basically is making things darker or brighter. This is what it actually means. So you can do all of this on one layer in one mask. But there's a little bit of a downside here for this method. For example, you can see here when I do this, the skin color is changing. So you can see this is going increasingly more orange and a little bit strange. So I want to show you another method that is more advanced than this. So first of all, let's start with a curve here. And I want to show you something. So here we have the curve. And of course, you can set it up to get brighter and you can set it up to get darker. And as you know, in Affinity Photo, every adjustment layer has its mask built into it. So what we can do here is we set this layer to invert. So this is applied nowhere in the image. And then again, you're using your brush, but this time only in white like so. So you paint it in wherever you need it. Now you can make this lighter. You can experiment by using opacity, different kinds of opacity. You can see here less opacity or you can adjust the flow rate. The flow rate is how basically how wet your brush is, how much color is in the brush. Lower flow rate means there is less color in the brush. Experiment with that and see what works best for you. But here's another thing that's really important to understand. When I do this, because this is an adjustment layer, this method basically is non-destructive in itself because on the other method that I showed you before with the pixel layer, you have the darkness or brightness of the brush that you painted on that. And this is what it is, right? But here I can adjust the curve later on. So if I say, well, I want to have this darker, I can do that. I want to have it brighter. I can do that too, or go even brighter and change it into the opposite, right? So you have still a lot of flexibility, but you can also see here, this is still changing our skin color. And for this, as I showed you in my last tutorial, this one that you should also check out, it's really cool. You can go here to the blend mode luminosity like so. So you can see now it is just darker, but it's not changing the tone of the skin, right? 
But here is the thing, we are using up the blend mode if we do that. So here is a comparison. I will now create a selection for the left side of the face and I will create here a curve adjustment and I will call this lap. And then I will make a selection for the right side of the face like so, create another curve and I will call this RGB. Now let's go and open up our lap adjustment first. So here we have the curve. Down here, as you can see, it says RGB. We change this over to lap. And then the channels also change. We have now master, lightness, A opponent, B opponent, and alpha. So we want to go to lightness and you can see I can make this darker and of course, as expected, it's getting darker. Now, if I do the same over here with RGB and I set this darker, you can see that this changes the color of the skin. It's not just getting darker, it's also getting a little bit more colorful, right? So I would have to change this over to luminosity. And now, as you can see, we have the exact same result as on our lab layer. Now here's the downside. If I have this, I have used up my blend mode and because it is set to luminosity, I can't influence the color anymore. So if I go to my red, green and blue channels and I want to adjust them a little bit, you can see that they are only going brighter and darker, but nothing else because of the luminosity blend mode. Now the benefit of my lap adjustment here is that I can still go with master, A opponent and B opponent. And you can see here with master, when I push it up, it gets warmer. And when I push it down, it gets cooler. So I can do that at the same time if I want to, or I can use this A opponent, B opponent. You can experiment with this. You can see what this does to the image and just play around with that. But I still have that benefit that I can use. So what you would do here is to set up two of these curve adjustments, one that you would call dark. And then of course, again, go to your lap. And then I will just duplicate that and call that bright. Okay. And again, this is in lab mode. And so now we want to invert both of them like so. And now I can paint this in where I say, okay, I want this area to be darker. So you set up a darkness value that want to, you want to achieve and you can paint on that in the way you want. So let's say, for example, I want to have this part of the face a little bit darker and then you switch over to the bright mode here to your bright curve, set this a little bit brighter and say, and I want to have this part of the face and this part maybe a little bit brighter. And so this is how you would use that in two different layers. So you can see this is only making areas brighter and this is only making areas darker. So it's a little bit more complex, but at the same time you have more control over it. And now I also want to show you another benefit of using a curve for dodge and burn. So let's go down here where we have this jeans. And when I paint in here on this area here, you can see right now nothing is changing because I haven't changed my curve. But if I go here for lightness, again, we are in the lab mode and make everything brighter, you can see that everything is getting brighter. Also the arm, also the shirt, also the belt, or everything is getting darker, right? So that is what would classically happen with the other layer too, where I have the pixel layer in soft light blend mode, right? But what I can do, because this is a curve, is I can lock down areas by creating these anchor points here. So let's just create these points down here. And then I can just go up here and make this lighter. And you can see this now mainly influences the jeans, but not the belt, not the shirt. It influences a little bit of the arm because the arm is also bright. So we want to go in here with black and paint this out a little bit on that area here. But now that we have done this, you can see this is only changing that while our belt and the shirt is staying the same. So this kind of works a little bit also like a luminosity mask, but it has an additional benefit. As you can see here, when you look at this detail here, because I'm only adjusting the brighter parts in my image, the darker parts, they stay put. And that means if I push this up and make this brighter and the darker parts stay as they are, that I create more contrast. 
So to show you another example why this can be beneficial is with this hair area here. So if I use the classic soft light technique with a dark gray brush, you can see when I paint on this area that everything here is getting darker in that area, also the bright hairs. But when I use this adjustment here with the lab setting and the lightness lockdown, so I only make the darker areas darker and I paint on here with a white brush, as you can see here, it is going darker, but the benefit is here that the bright hairs still stick out and are bright. So you can actually adjust that in a way where you make areas darker, but the highlights, they still stay around. So this can be super beneficial. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you tomorrow in my live stream on my YouTube channel, as you can see here. Thank you and goodbye.